So now at 11 o'clock, there are signs of progress in the effort to reopen southbound I-5 after Monday's deadly train derailment. Tonight, crews hauled away several more train cars from the site. Some of the cars have now been taken to Joint Base Lewis McCord for further inspection. Traffic continues to be a major issue, but late tonight, engineers actually got a chance to inspect the rail bridge that runs over the interstate. And guess what? They say it is structurally sound. Now, that's a big step to getting I-5 back open. King 5's Heather Graff is live with more on the traffic situation tonight. Well, let's start by giving you a look at the rail bridge that we're talking about. Take a look structurally sound as you just mentioned, and according to WashDOT, it is in need of only minor repairs in order to safely reopen the roadway, which is certainly good news for drivers throughout the area who've been dealing with gridlock ever since the southbound lanes of I-5 shut down. A 3.30 p.m. departure from Seattle headed south on Interstate 5 is never easy not even in normal traffic conditions. And early on, the signs overhead warned that this commute is anything but normal. In fact, we nearly missed the 7 p.m. start of this DuPont City Council meeting because it took so long to get there. This traffic, uh, it makes me tired. On Tuesday, the Washington Department of Transportation warned that the Amtrak train derailment that shut down this section of I-5 southbound would be felt far beyond the crash scene. And even worse, they say the road that serves as the backbone for this region's transportation system could be closed for several more days. I am hopeful that sometime tomorrow they may be able to open I-5 back up. I think a lot of that depends on what level of damage they find. If that bridge has to have some serious work done on it before it's safe, to travel under, you know, that could, that's probably the long pole in the tent. It's a big part of the reason DuPont Mayor Mike Kortz declared a state of emergency following Monday's derailment and why the city on Tuesday tweeted this. If you have a critical medical appointment and need to head southbound out of the city, call the DuPont Police Department. We will do everything possible to get you there. Kidney dialysis, cardiac appointments, and it's hard to reschedule appointments, so we've we've uh, offered to provide transport. Just one of many traffic trouble drivers across our area are now dealing with as they navigate clogged detour routes and local roads. Because they're a bunch of knuckleheads. Seeing red in more ways than one on this day two of the I-5 closure. And as you take another live look at the scene here, we can tell you these crews will be working through the night. And again, now that the rail bridge has been deemed structurally sound, we can tell you the interstate below could be opening up a bit sooner than expected. As of right now, WashDOT says it is, quote, highly likely the southbound lanes will remain closed throughout tomorrow's morning commute. For now, live tonight in DuPont, Heather Graff, King 5 News. Heather, thanks for that update. We have all the information on ways to get around the I-5 closure on king5.com. You'll find the story on our homepage. WashDOT is asking people to avoid the area, if at all possible. Now for the very latest on the NTSB investigation. About 20 investigators are on scene, and we've learned that they've recovered info from one of the train's two black boxes from the rear of the, uh, or the rear, rather, locomotive. It revealed that the train was going 80 miles an hour when it crashed. Now, the posted speed limit was about 30 miles an hour. Those data recorders will also tell investigators the position of the brakes and throttle and any mechanical issues at all. NTSB expects to be on scene for the next 7 to 10 days.